Are you feeling abandoned by God? Do you feel like giving up? I understand that desperation. I have a story to tell you. Hi everyone, this is Sarah from sunnyschoolnetwork.com. But before I begin, I wanna offer a prayer to help me tell you and to help you receive it. Lord, um, thank you for today. Thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that you would bless the words that I'm about to say, and I pray for the people that will receive it. Amen. Eight years ago today, I found myself in an emergency room with my husband. His life was hanging in the balance. You see, he had fainted and fallen and hit his head um, and suffered a traumatic brain injury. I was told that if he survived, he might never walk or talk um, or understand anything ever again. He could be in a vegetative state. Um, I can't even put into words the depths of despair that my family and I experienced over the course of that particular day, but then also over the course of six and a half months that followed. Um, and he survived. Uh, however, he continues to have a serious uh, problems with communicating and understanding. He is able to walk. And our lives are marked with before Bob's injury, my husband Bob, before his injury and after his injury. Um, and he can't be left alone. <clears throat> Yet despite our lives not being the same, and despite all the ways and all the trauma that we went through, um, today I woke up with, um, with hope. I, it's probably the first time, and this is to the anniversary of, of his injury, and it's probably the first time on the anniversary date that i woken up feeling hopeful. Um, and so I wanted to share with you some of the things that have occurred over the last eight years, some of the lessons that I've learned um, that might help you if you're feeling abandoned by God and that you wanna maybe give up and that you're desperate for God to intervene and that you've lost hope. So today I hope that what I have to share with you, I have three things that I wanna look at that I think might be helpful for you. So number one is to look back. Um, God's word says that his children walk by faith and not by sight, um, that it's impossible to please God without faith. And so as his child, um, he's given us the ability to have this faith. But I think it's also important to look back, to remember how God um, came through when difficult times in the past came to remember and look back at how he's provided for you, to remember and look back at how he's protected you, and to remember and look back at how he's comforted you through his word and, and through his promises. And if you relate to what I'm saying, I'd love to read your comments, and I'd love to be able to pray for you as well, because I know that prayer, not only my prayers, because it's largely very difficult to pray during that time, but it was the prayers of other people that got us through. So um, yes, comment below. So the second thing I want you to do is to look around. I remember feeling so devastated that I wanted to give up and I questioned, did I even believe all the things that I wrote, um, all the lessons and devotions that I'd written about God? Um, and yet at the, at the moment that this was happening, all those months that these were happening, I, it was very hard for me to grab a hold of God and to know that he was there. I oftentimes felt like I was just falling into an abyss. And I, and I pleaded with God and I asked for his help. And I remember thinking, well, what if, what would I, I remember thinking, what would I say to somebody who was going through the same thing that I was going through? And honestly, I couldn't come up with an answer. But the one thing that I did keep thinking is, well, you know, do I really believe what I have that I've said I've believed? Did I really believe those things that I had written? And then I also would question, well, where would I go if I abandoned my faith? To whom would I go? To whom would I turn? Um, who else is there that holds the keys to eternity? Who else is there that promises to walk through the valley of the shadow of death? There is no one else. There is nothing else. So who would I turn to? I couldn't, there was no one else. So. I would encourage you to look around. There is no one else. 
And you know, there were some days that the only prayer that I could muster was, was just Jesus. And that was enough. Because you know what the Bible tells us? And I'm, I'm using notes so I don't forget what I want to tell you. Um, but the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. He prays for us with words that, are, that we can't understand, with groanings too deep for words. And so God is there. The Good Shepherd is there. He's walking with us. He promises to walk with us. And then the last thing that I want you to look at is to look forward. Uh, whatever your situation, it will not always be this way in this life or in the next life to come, of course. So if you're a child of God, that means if you're the, trusting in the one who is the Savior, Jesus the Savior, the one who paid the debt that we owe for sinning against God, then here's the promise that God gives us. He promises to wipe away every tear from our eyes. And Lord knows I've prayed buckets of tears, but God doesn't just say he'll wipe away our tears. He says he'll wipe away our, he'll wipe away every tear from our eyes, every teardrop, every single one. He knows every event. He knows every single teardrop that you and I have um, cried over the grief and the despair in this world. And in Psalm 56, it says that God holds our tears in a bottle. This is a poetic way of saying that God sees our tears, understands our pain, and is close to the brokenhearted. Oh, what will we do without our Savior? So to look forward has to do with fixing our eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith, as Hebrews tells us. No matter our circumstances, God will not let us be in this valley one second longer than he allows. He is there with us in this valley. In the valley of the shadow of death, he promises to walk with us. So we fix our eyes on Jesus. We call on him. We trust his promises that he says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So <clears throat> he will meet us today and he will meet us face to face one day. So in the description below, I'm going to reference the Bible verses that I've, that I've spoken about. Um, I hope this has helped you. I hope this has helped you to go one more day trusting God, believing in his promises. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I invite you to subscribe to the channel um, where I hope to be able to encourage you more. Um, and I'd love to be able to pray for you too. So leave your prayers below. Share this video, video with someone who needs to hear it, who needs this encouragement. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.